Dinosaurs ruled Earth during a period called the Jurassic. It was such an interesting time with so many moving creatures on land. However, two titanic predators could be easily identified from others. Allosaurus, the Lion of Jurassic, had been capturing our imaginations for years. But not many people have heard of its fierce competitor, Torvosaurus, which was big and deadly as well. How could these two top predators survive together? Did they fight for dominance, or did they just occupy different hunting areas? In today's video, I'll answer all these questions. But first, before we begin our exploration into their rivalry, let me introduce you to the setting in which these animals lived. This period lasted approximately between 201 and 145 million years ago in the time calendar, according to scientists who specialize themselves in paleontology. The environment was most conducive to the survival of enormous dinosaurs. The landscape was predominantly occupied by herbivores, especially large sauropods like Brachiosaurus, Diplodocus, and Apatosaurus. These long-necked creatures grazed in herds upon the abundant vegetation, and where there were huge herbivores, there were also oversized predators. In this verdant world, Allosaurus and Torvosaurus were two of its most terrifying carnivores. However, how did they fit into this Jurassic ecosystem, and what roles do apex predators serve? To begin with, let's consider the Allosaurus as an apex carnivore, often regarded as the supreme predator living during the Jurassic time period. Allosaurus existed nearly between 155 million years ago and about 150 million ago, mostly found in North America, but fossil records have been discovered in parts of Europe and Africa too. With a length of about 30 feet and weighing between 2 and 4 tons, Allosaurus was a predator, with speed and efficiency. Speed was his thing, because he had powerful hind legs that made him run faster than many of his preys, at speeds of up to 30 miles per hour. But this was not all about speed only. Allosaurus had a skull containing sharp, serrated teeth that could rip through anything made of flesh. Interestingly enough, some paleontologists think that Allosaurus may have used its head as a hatchet, using it like an axe on top of its prey to deliver very painful cuts. Binocular vision was one of those features that served to scare people because it enabled Allosaurus to measure distance and then accurately hunt for their victims without missing any bullets or shots since he knew how far he was from them. Therefore, he did not only apply brute force when he killed his prey. However, sometimes he performed it skillfully as well. However, we should discuss the lesser known but equally stunning Torvosaurus. This predator lived in the latter part of the Jurassic period at the same time as the Allosaurus, but had a rather different mode of life. The North American and European regions have yielded fossil finds of Torvosaurus, with its remains being concentrated mainly in Portugal. Torvosaurus could probably have been bigger than Allosaurus since it could reach lengths of about 35 feet and weigh nearly 5 tons. Its heavier frame implies that it was not very fast, yet in terms of power alone, it was probably unmatched by anything else on land then. If Allosaurus were to be compared to a cheetah of our time, then Torvosaurus would be like a bear, a massive predator that could easily defeat even the largest of its prey. With its enormous skull equipped with blade-like teeth, perfect for slicing through thick flesh systems and bones, it had all these features. There was also some degree of similarity in the habitats they inhabited as well as their food choices between Allosaurus and Torvosaurus. The diverse landscapes in North America during the Jurassic featured big river valleys, floodplains, and woody areas. Therefore, these predators had better hunting grounds. Interestingly enough, while Allosaurus and Torvosaurus preyed on nearly the same animals, they probably lived in slightly different ecological niches. Allosaurus, which was faster and agile, might have preferred open plains where it chased smaller and swifter prey that included ornithopods or juvenile sauropods. Torvosaurus, on the other hand, was larger, so perhaps it remained within wooded areas where it ambushed bigger but slower herbivores. Some fossils even suggest direct confrontations between them. Bite marks found on Allosaurus bones corresponded with those made by Torvosaurus indicating that there might have been fights over food or dominance among them. Additionally, some sauropod fossils exhibit indications of assault from both predators, pointing towards competition for kills. The typical day of an ancient giant could include a good number of different foods. Many predators had no shortage of variety, and open confrontations would have been dangerous. One thing is certain though. In the harshest days of the past, you could easily lose a fight by being seriously hurt 
because life depended on it. The skull of Allosaurus was not particularly large relative to its size, and there were differences between this dinosaur's mouth and those seen on that of Torvosaurus, which had stronger jaws. This has led some paleontologists to believe that the kill for Allosaurus did not always come from a single bite, but rather employed a slice-and-run strategy, in which case it waited until its food weakened due to loss of blood before capturing them. The two predators had different adaptations that allowed them to live together without having to share everything they ate. A typical example here is niche partitioning, where diverse species develop ways of tapping from similar habitats via taking advantage of several resource subformats within one ecosystem. The predation tactics of these two species are very interesting. For example, Allosaurus is often thought of as a gregarious predator. Some paleontologists think it could have hunted in packs, coordinating assaults on larger prey like sauropods. This idea is supported by fossil sites where several Allosaurus individuals were found together, plus evidence for coordinated assaults on massive plant eaters. The variations could have constituted how they interacted with each other as predators. Thus, if Allosaurus were to hunt in packs, then it would have had some benefits over a lone Torvosaurus, though against few it could not have won because of its size and strength. Nevertheless, there's no denying that controversies did happen. When two hunters share the same ground, it's unavoidable to cross paths. These incidents may have been uncommon, however, they were savage whenever they occurred. An adult Torvosaurus could have easily killed an Allosaurus, but a group of Allosaurus might have been able to drive away a single Torvosaurus. During the late Jurassic period, both Allosaurus and Torvosaurus were dominant predators with different legacies. Allosaurus had a wider geographic range and more adaptability and therefore became one of the most represented hunters in fossil records. Numerous fossils discovered help understand its behavior better than anything else, including biology and evolutionary success. Notably, these two predators coexisted during a transition phase of ecosystems. The Cretaceous period would witness new forms of predation with the emergence of Ceratosaurus and fierce Tyrannosaurus. Although Allosaurus and Torvosaurus never lived long enough to see how Tyrannosaurus went on to become dominant in the Cretaceous, they provided the base for the age of big theropods that ensued. Just visualize a completely grown-up Allosaurus alongside an enormous Torvosaurus. Who would be the ultimate winner? This is a question which paleontologists have spent years debating, and although we may never have a conclusive answer of sorts, we can guess from what we know about their anatomy and behavior. Given its speed and agility, probably Allosaurus would utilize hit-and-run tactics while trying to exhaust out the gigantic Torvosaurus. As sharp claws with quick motions can deal damage, it needs to be careful not to approach too much into the area where Torvosaurus's jaws are actively working. Fossil finders are shaping how we think about these awesome hunters. New technologies let us study fossils like never before in the area of paleoscience, which is always advancing. Every year brings researchers new knowledge on how these beings lived, hunted, and developed. Finally, the more complete Torvosaurus skeletons found, particularly in Europe, have raised questions concerning its size and attitude. Some paleontologists feel that it was possibly among the largest carnivores during the Jurassic. In contrast to previous views, that Allosaurus was a dominant figure during that period. Even more fossil discoveries may tell us more regarding their interactions as two predaceous animals. You never know, maybe someday archaeologists will unearth physical proof of a fight between them frozen forever in time. But who was the greatest of all predators in Jurassic, Allosaurus or Torvosaurus? The verdict is not as straightforward as selecting one of them to be a victor. Both of these predators inhabited their own niches, where they flourished for a long time and made significant contributions to their ecosystems. During the Jurassic era, these two giants contributed to the general equilibrium in the ecosystem. Their conflicts might not have always been there, but they certainly characterized that period. They altered their surroundings, influenced the numbers of prey, and probably even some other carnivores that came later followed their paths. At last, we have a tale of survival, adjustment, and supremacy here about Allosaurus and Torvosaurus. Two hunters were brought up with hunting instincts in those days when only powerful ones managed to stay alive. Hence, if you're thinking about the Jurassic era, remember that battles were not only among predators and prey, but also among titans themselves. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. 
share your thoughts in the comments below, and make sure to click the bell icon so you stay updated with all our latest videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.